Hi, it's Adam from Pixel. I want to share a story with you today that applies to, and I feel will be extremely valuable to anybody who has suffered chronically in any which way, shape, or form. This includes physical suffering, emotional, social, familial, chemical, you name it. Throw, throw whatever you want on the pile. If you've found yourself suffering in any which way, shape, or form, this video is for you. Furthermore, this video is for anybody who needs to, needs a very valuable reminder of why certain things that I'm going to be sharing with you today are going to continue to serve the best quality of your life forever. I know because I'm approaching five decades and I've relearned a lesson that I'm going to share with you today that has made me extremely happy and has, has repaired so many broken parts of myself, parts of myself that have been all but shattered over three quarters of the last year. Quite dramatic intro, I know. But there's a lot of truth in that. Before I continue, however, I want to, I want to bait the hook and also plug somebody who I want to mention right off the bat, Dr. Charlie Johnson, a physiotherapist, doctor and physiotherapist, uh, who you can find online, YouTube. He's right there, he's free, okay? And he's somebody who specializes in back, butt, and leg pain. Basically anything to do with the, from the lumbar sp spine down, okay? And uh, I wanna share with you how, what I learned from him, or at least what I've been reminded of by him, um, repaired my life in so many ways. So let me take you back. Let me take you back actually over 30 years or almost 30 years between 20 and 30. My concept of time, by the way, sucks ass. So you're going to have to put up with that. <laughs> you're gonna, if you do the math, you're going to be like, that doesn't make any sense. Bear with me. Okay. But going back close to 30 years, I remember one day, the first time I ever experienced uh, debilitating back pain, which is kind of the core of today's story, but it's not what the story is all about. I was putting gas in my car and with a tank, with a gas tank. And um, I go back in my house with an empty gas tank that weighed less than half the weight of my phone. And I put it down on the ground. And when I got back up, I felt like somebody had who jabbed a, p a pole right into my back. Just ugh, this sudden jolt. And I fell down to my knees and I couldn't get back up. And I, I suffered three or four days of really debilitating pain where I could barely walk, followed by around six months of a lot of challenge walking because it was just tingling and uncomfortable, not knowing what it was. I, I attributed it to a muscle. I pulled a muscle in my back. I don't know, you know. So I didn't know what it was, but I knew that I had sciatica. Sciatica is the nerve that goes down your leg, and sciatica, can be, sciatica is the symptom of leg numbness or tingling or pain that can originate in your back. Usually, more often than not, it originates in your lumbar spine. And it can travel down your butt, into your legs, all the way down to your feet. Um, and I suffered with that, having a very hard time walking any more than half a block for a good six months until I discovered doing these forward bend spinal decompression exercises that seemed to be my, my, uh, my miracle cure. And it happened then and it went back to normal and it was all around the time where I was doing a lot of jive dancing and swing dancing and I was doing Taibo, which is, you know, a, a nightmare for, um, a nightmare for the lower back. Chiropractors love Taibo uh, because they get a lot of clients from that, as do physiotherapists. But uh, yeah, so that happened and it went away. And for many years following, I was okay after that. It, it didn't bother me until maybe, maybe around 10 years, 10, 15 years. And then it happened again uh, when I was shoveling. And then it happened again the following year when I was raking. It was always like gardening or shoveling or heavy lifting or moving things around the house. I would have a spasm in my back that would either cause immediate pain or it would be pain that would kick in the next day and I would be in very bad shape and I, was, I would have a very hard time moving. And it'd be a couple of, 
couple of days at least of moaning and groaning until about a week or two when it would subside and then eventually it would go away. And the exercise of choice that seemed to do the trick for me to pull me out of the pull me out of the thick of it were, were these spinal decompression exercises where I'd bend down and touch my toes. Uh, I'm saying this for a reason, by the way. So, um, fast forward to nine months ago, eight, nine months ago. I was gardening, surprise, surprise, and as I put the handle of my of my lawnmower down, as I get back up, I feel that all too familiar spasm. Although this time, uniquely, it was higher up in my back, it was actually closer to my th my thoracic spine, uh, lower lower rib spine, and I, I felt this kind of <coughs> ooh, the sudden like jolt, and I went, oh, fuck, not again. There was no pain until the next day, but the next day the pain was so bad, I'd never experienced it this bad before in my life. It was horrific. I couldn't walk. I couldn't move. I could barely breathe. It hurt so much. My leg, my butt was completely locked up as I had experienced before in the past, but this time much worse. And it was hard for my kids, you know, watching, watching dad moan and groan, watching your parents in pain like that. And being in this kind of very, very vulnerable state can be hard to watch. Albeit my kids aren't super young. They're already approaching, they're already 10 and above at this point. But, uh, Lucas, happy birthday. His birthday's in exactly four days. Just a little uh, heads up there. So yeah, um, it was really bad. But okay, what are you going to do? A week passes, two weeks, three. By now I should start feeling a little bit better, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm taking Advil just to kind of get me through the day and to be able to teach and function minimally, but I'm in really bad shape. My sleep is completely crap. I, I, walking is okay, but... Um, you know, I'm just in this very bad pain all the time. And, uh, um, three weeks, four weeks, two months end up passing. And I've gone from a nine on 10 pain down to maybe at best a seven. And then it eventually after around, around three months, three, four months, it slowly day by day, like it was healing by 2% a day at best. I find it around a three to four, but it's a constant nagging discomfort and pain that I know is not going away. And I'm, I'm because this has been going on for so long, I'm very conscious of the fact that um, I'm starting to become fearful of day-to-day -day activities. I'm afraid to do stuff. I'm afraid to move water jugs or go grocery shopping and carry bags. I'm afraid to any kind of lifting or bending or anything like that. But come five, four, five, six months, I'm getting impatient at this point. I'm not really fully healing. I'm down to around a three or four. I'm constantly aware of this pain and discomfort. And Christmas season kicks in and my family leaves the house for about a week or so. So I decided to take this opportunity to redo my studio. And I thought it was going to be a small project, but knowing me, I'm a completionist. So I painted the walls and frames and put up new furniture and move everything around. It ended up becoming a big job. And although I'm trying my best to be careful with my movements, I'm working on something that's wrong and I don't know what it is, but yeah. So sure as shit, one day I wake up, right around the six month period, I wake up the next day and I'm right back to square one again. I'm not back to a 9 on 10 pain. I'm back to a 10 on 10 pain. So what happens at that point? Well, first time, shame on you. Second time, shame on me. You know, I knew there was a problem. I Oh yeah, and at this point, by the way, I've gone to see two physiotherapists at this point. I haven't gotten a diagnosis. They're talking about herniation, which is the first time I've actually, I didn't even, I've heard the word herniation my whole life, but I never actually knew what it was specifically. Um, and a herniation is essentially when the dip, I actually have a spine right over here, just in case. A herniation of the spine. <laughs> you have your vertebrae and you have your discs between them. And a herniation is when that disc can, the, the nucleus pulposa, the, the jelly-like interior, can push out. You actually have a little red dot over here that's showing what a herniation could look like. It comes out and it presses against the nerve. You've got five nerves that travel down from the lower lumbar spine to the top of the sacral spine that merge together to create the sciatic nerve. It's about an inch thick. And that passes through this little hole over here known as your, your, your greater sciatic foramen. Foramen just means hole. Okay. And that travels down your leg. Biggest nerve in the body by a long shot and extremely painful. 
So I start to research. I'm 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 an, I'm an I teach anatomy. I'm I'm fascinated with with about the human body. I have all these anatomy models behind the camera and stuff like that. And uh, I start to learn about herniations and about about spinal stenosis and all the and you know and spondylolisthesis and and uh, you name it. I'm I'm really educating myself on it. I'm trying to learn about it. I'm going to see these physiotherapists. They are very capable physiotherapists. They're very educated physiotherapists, but their exercises are not helping and I'm just seeing my symptoms getting progressively worse. It just so happens at that point, after four years of not having a personal doctor, because my old doctor, who I love to death, he ended up having to quit because burnout. <laughs> Two out of three doctors go to burnout leave, right? For obvious reasons. Um, he quits. So I was left without a doctor and then we moved to this new place. But then I get assigned this new doctor who I've never met. And um, thankfully the timing's good because at this point I'm desperate and I'm in horrible pain. It's not going away. It's just come back. So I know that I'm basically my fears were right. Moving just made it worse. So what do I do? I, I'm, I'm not even 50 years old yet and I've got my whole life ahead of me and I'm already in this state. So they arranged the first meeting with this doctor and this is the reason I had to re-record this video three times because um, uh, I had to educate myself um, and Char Dr. Charlie Johnson actually helps with this quite a bit because he has a video on this on different people's roles. What a physiotherapist specialty is, what your GPs, what your general practitioner, your family doctor's role is, what a spinal surgeon's role is, what a chiropractor's role is, et cetera, et cetera. And she did her job. She scheduled an MRI, great. She prescribed me with, uh, uh, with a painkiller. And when I asked her, because <laughs> the whole time I'm talking to her, um, because I was used to a doctor that, you know, he would show me his computer screen, he would educate me, he would tell me about things, he would sit me down and make sure that I was very clear on everything, he would call me up and follow up and things like that. He, would, he, he If I asked for certain blood tests or certain things to get done, because I have hypothyroidism, he said, yeah, sure, absolutely. He would always be very cooperative about that. He never second-guessed me or anything like that. With this new one, she barely even made eye contact with me the whole time I was in the office with her. She just kind of wrote notes the whole time I was sitting there talking to her. And she says, well, I'll prescribe you with this, with this painkiller. And I said, okay. She goes, it is a narcotic, by the way. She says very flippantly. And I said, uh, narcotic. And I said, she goes, yeah. And I said, but what are the side effects of coming off of this narcotic if, if I need to take it for any longer than for an extended period of time? To which she answers, it's the first time she's made eye contact, you're in pain, right? You said you're in pain? I said, that wasn't my point. I said, yeah, I'm in pain, but, but what are the side effects of coming off of this? And she's saying, oh, are you telling me you have an addictive personality? I said, FYI, I didn't say it like that. I was trying to be respectful. But I said, from my understanding, narcotics create addictive personalities, unless there's something I don't know. You know, I'm trying, to, I'm trying not to be insulted here, but are you gas you're gaslighting me here, right? She wasn't answering my question. So she said, but you said you're in pain. Okay, you know what? I'll do my own homework, obviously, you know. And then she says, okay, we'll set up another appointment. I recommend you go see a physiotherapist, which I'd already been doing. And uh, um, come and see me in a couple of months. And I'm going to be on mat leave in a couple of months. Now, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not Michael from Vsauce, but my spotty sensors are telling me, if you want to meet me in two months, but you're going on mat leave in two months, then who's going to be there when I arrive? <laughs> hmm? There's something very, I'm getting a big a bit of a mixed message from this. She goes, we'll just make an appointment. <sighs> okay. I walked out of there with an MRI, an, an MRI scheduled. So that's, you know, for what it's worth. She was doing her job. Bare minimum, but she was doing it. And needless to say, I didn't gel with her personality, but I waited four years for a GP. Am I going to just find another one? No. So I'm stuck with this for now, for what it's worth. Um, but I went to get the MRI. I go back to see her again with the MRI. She, she calls me back with the results because, yes, I had a pretty severe herniation at L4, L5. That means bet between the fourth and fifth lumbar vertebrae. And moderate to severe uh, um, um, uh, arthrosis, 
Not to be mistaken with arthritis. Arthritis is inflammation of the joint. Arthrosis is degeneration of it at L4, L5 and a little bit above and below. Really concentrated there. And the diagnosis was most likely the herniation, which was quite serious, uh, is causing is causing the problem, is causing the nerve pain. Um, albeit the de degeneration could as well because... <coughs> Another cause of sciatic pain is that you don't only have nerves going down the middle, you have nerves going down the sides. And you have these little holes between each vertebrae where the nerves pass through. Over here, I know you're looking super, super far. They're called your intervertebral foramen, meaning the holes on the side of your vertebrae that the nerves can pass through too. And if those, if those degenerate, those holes can get smaller and that can be a problem too. So I'm, I'm, I'm very possibly dealing with a double-edged sword at this point. Because if I do movements in one way, it could cause make the herniation worse. And if I do movements in the other way, it could aggravate that, that joint, right? Because I'm closing the joint. That said, I go to see a third physiotherapist. And by the way, every physiotherapist that I've seen so far, I do like. They're patient, they're attentive, they're educated. But the advice that they're giving me is nothing that I haven't seen on YouTube. 18 million times by every single physiotherapy uh, uh, YouTuber out there. And I'm not going to mention them because I, I'm, I don't want to call anybody out here. Um, that's not what this video is about. But yeah, so I go to see this third guy and I really, really like him. I like the way he's communicating. He respects my existing knowledge of anatomy and plays off of that and builds off of that. And he's he's got a gentler approach and everything like that but at the end he says i want you need to do more you should do some extension exercise the cobra poses which is basically the 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 band-aid approach every single physiotherapist says and i explained to them at this point because it's our first appointment i said i'm totally cool with that because i can see that you're testing me and you can see that in the office when i do flexion exercises that i get a pinch i get a sudden jolt of pain when I do extension exercises, I don't feel, I can do a full cobra and feel perfectly comfortable, but after the fact, I notice my symptoms get worse. And this is, can be later on that day or even the following day, I find that my symptoms have worsened. He goes, I get it, I get it, but just try it for a week and we'll see how it goes. That week, for what it's worth, must have been a tipping point with my pain because Prior to that, my my walking had been pretty bad. Like I could walk about half a block and it got really bad and I'd have to turn around and come back um, because people kept saying that walking with a herniation would make it better. Although if you have spinal stenosis, if you have the actual narrowing of the vertebrae, of the, of the, of the openings, if you have that, then walking actually makes, that's a telltale sign of, of, sp of spinal degeneration in that case. Um, then walking becomes a problem. I couldn't, I was walking, it was troublesome, but I was, I could make it about half a block. But after about a week of doing these cobra poses and these extensions that my physiotherapist had recommended, I couldn't walk. I barely made it back into the clinic the following week. I was, I would walk maybe around, I'd, I'd have about 10 seconds of walking and then I would have to stop because I just could not bear it any further. It was just too unbearable either extreme tingling and discomfort or tightness or, or muscle spasms or or pain but i made it into his office and i'm sitting in his office and i'm trying to find a position that's not terribly uncomfortable to sit down i wanted to get down on my hands and knees because the only position that didn't hurt was when i was on my hands and knees uh, and just staying there um uh i go into his office i tell him the situation goes okay i understand it's just it's going to take time adam you know we just have to be patient with this you know the herniation is pretty bad and i'm sitting there going but you don't understand don't understand when i do it it makes it worse and i go in the past now that i know that i've actually what i've been experiencing for the last 30 years because it's dawning me at dawning on me at that point i've been herniating myself i've had a recurring hernia for almost 30 years i didn't realize it was a herniation but that first episode I had with that gas tank was a herniation and every subsequent episode after that, I was re-herniating myself. I didn't realize that. And I had healed from every herniation. And I healed from every herniation doing flexion exercises by touching my toes and doing that spinal decompression movement. But every single physiotherapist on the block says, don't do that. That makes it worse. 
And I respect that advice. But ignorance is bliss because that fixed my problem in the past. You see where I'm going with this? So whatever. My physiotherapist says, no, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Although he's not strongly recommending it. He's no, it's better off if you do it this way. And he does some traction. He pulls on my legs and do some traction exercises. And we do a little bit of extension. Well, the straw that broke the camel's back. What, what this whole video is about is reaching the brink in more way than one. The moment I walked out of that office with that physiotherapist, because what could, should have been a 20 second walk through the front lobby into my car in the parking lot took me over 30 minutes because I could not walk more than one or two steps without being in excruciating pain. It was horrific pain. And not only that, the receptionist who saw me hobble into the physiotherapist's office watched me crawl back out. And she even walked out. She goes, are you okay? And I said, well, would it be stupid for me to say, yeah, I'm fine? <laughs> because obviously I'm not. But I managed one step at a time. Even when I tried to say, screw it, just go, just go. You got to get to your car. I couldn't get past two. It was just like, it was like walking into a blade. I, I couldn't do it. But I did, I managed eventually to get into the car and I sit down in the car after a doctor, three physiotherapists that I, that I have confirmation at this point are not making it better, they're only making it worse. Sitting in the car in horrible discomfort and pain with frosted windows because I didn't even bother turning the car on because it was, I was just in too much pain to even think of turning the car on. I couldn't even see outside because my windows were all frosted up. And I put my keys into the ignition I let go of the key without turning the car on and I cried for 45 minutes straight. I just wept. And I wept because it was at that very moment where I lost hope. With that, I was basically living my worst nightmare. That after three quarters of a year, close to three quarters of a year at this point, I have gone from being in debilitating pain to being completely immobile. And I wept. I wept because I was exhausted. I wept because I was in pain. I wept because I was hopeless. I wept because I was afraid. I had every possible negative emotion all just landing on me like an elephant. And then when I was done crying, I turned the car on and I drove home and I, with great difficulty, hobbled out of my car into my house and I put my pajamas on with extreme difficulty and I laid down in my bed, wiped out and I just laid there in pain. And I, I think I crashed out of pure exhaustion because I was not sleeping more than two or three hours a night on average. Sleep's always been kind of shitty for me, but it was particularly bad then. And I woke up around two o'clock in the morning because of the pain and discomfort was just unbearable. I could not find a comfortable spot lying on my back, lying on my side, lying on my other side, lying on my... Nothing. Nothing helped. And then, as I picked up my phone, and I started scrolling through my videos, I fell on the first lower back pain thumbnail title that made me go, Oh! And it was a video, the first video I discovered by Dr. Charlie Johnson. And I can't remember the title of the video specifically, but it had something to do with stop exercising. Stop. Just stop. Cobra poses, stop. <laughs> Just stop doing it, right? And I went, hmm, well, I've tried everything else. I might as well listen to this guy. So I listened to this guy and he's, he's got, he's, he's, there's no fancy production. He doesn't have any of that stupid fancy... PT lab, physiotherapist lab, Bob and Brad stuff. He's, they're all over the, you can't, you can't even look up cooking recipes without seeing these guys. They're all over the place. And, um, and what he said for the first time in nine months makes absolute perfect sense. He says, for starters, stop poking the bear or stop poking the tiger or something like that. Basically meaning this is a nerve. It's an angry, aggravated nerve. Stop pissing it off by stretching, exercising, cobra poses, walking, whatever. If it hurts, 
stop. Because when you're in this state of acute pain, everything hurts. When you first have, if you've ever suffered a herniation or anything like that, that acute phase, those first crucial beginnings, in my particular case, nine months, right? But in this, in this acute phase, the pain is everywhere. Everything hurts. So anything hurts, any th movement, walking, sitting, standing, everything hurts, but you keep aggravating it. You can't figure out the source of the problem. You can't figure out which movements heal or hurt when you're in that phase. And I'm sitting there going, you know how many hundreds and hundreds of physiotherapy and back specialists and exercises and spinal surgeons and orthopedic surgeons and, and doctors videos I've watched. This is the first guy to actually recommend this. And this is yet again, the one, uh, one of the reasons why I'm like, screw you, <laughs> YouTube. Why did you not recommend this guy earlier? So I've done everything else. And I, I scheduled to have another physiotherapist appointment the following week, and I decided to cancel it for now, just to see. I want to, I, I need a resting period, right? Speaking of rest, I have to lubricate the, the gurgle flipper, right? So a week passes. It's the first week in nine months that I've actually rested, that I have done jack shit. I didn't exercise. I only rested. I only lied down and come in positions that were more comfortable. If I felt anything that made it worse, I stopped immediately. No exercises, no stretches, no nothing. Zilch. And after one week, I've gone from a nine on 10 to a four on 10. After two weeks, I've gone down to 4 on 10, down to a 2 on 10. After three weeks, I'm down to a 0.5. I'm walking again, completely pain-free. I'm moving again, 99% pain-free. I still feel there's a little bit of something going on right now. Even right now, as I talk to you, I can feel a little bit my glute, but it's nothing. It's a joke, it's nothing. Compared to what I've been through, Piece of crumb cake, man. No problem. So now I'm starting to real. I'm starting to feel the pain go away, but more than pain is going away. And that's the whole reason why I'm dedicating this entire video to Dr. Charlie Johnson. I'm not just healing, or I have not just been healing, because there's more. To, there's more to the story. But I'm feel like I'm getting my life back. Most importantly, when you've been dealing with chronic anything, chronic insomnia, chronic pain, chronic emotional difficulties, chronic relationship issues, chronic problems finding work and finding a career and chronic money issues, any chronic pain, all of those categorized as chronic pain, you lose hope. You become fearful. And what Charlie Johnson's videos, what Dr. Charlie Johnson's videos did, did is they started to give me my hope back. But to make it even better, once that pain, once you found that, as he calls it, the baseline, I attended one of his free seminars where he walks you through the process of discovering, of learning yourself, of studying your body and getting those cues from your body. What's good, what's bad. He calls it yummy and yucky on a, sta on a scale from low to moderate to severe. Does this feel good when you do it? Keep doing it. Does this feel bad? Stop. Okay? And you're gauging all of these things. Of course, I'll walk. He's, he's a professional. I'll, I'll, I'll let you. You can go and check out his channel. It's a free seminar. You can check it out anytime you want. Um, but uh, what he's doing is he's, he's starting to teach you the next most important step in a hugely important facet of healing. And this has to do with your life, it has to do with your relationships, it has to do with your career, it has to do with your body, it has to do with your mind. Overcoming fear. When you've lived a certain way for long enough, you start to become fearful. When you've lived in acute pain for long enough, you become afraid to move. And trust me, two weeks is enough to become afraid to move. Two weeks is, is enough time to become afraid that that insomnia is permanent, that that anxiety is permanent. It only takes a couple of weeks. It needs to be recurring. Try nine months. Try years where people go through these problems for years without getting the solution. But by, by listening to these physiotherapists online that keep telling them to poke the bear every two seconds. Do the exercise. Do the exercise. No pain, no gain. Yeah. That's complete bullshit, by the way. 
He starts to say, okay, you can't do that. Now that you've done all these different movements, he walks into all these different movements you can do. Which ones hurt? Which ones didn't? Which ones made you feel better? Which ones made you feel worse? Okay. Don't do the ones that hurt. Can you do that? Yeah, no problem. I, Captain. <laughs> Piece of cake. More importantly, do the ones. Do the ones that don't hurt. Why? Because you need to retrain your brain to move again. Movement, it's healing through movement, as he calls it. Okay? This isn't some wishy-washy textbook answer. No. You're healing through movement. You're teaching your brain. You're, re you're reprogramming your brain to accept movement. But the movement that your body feels is safe. Can you do your bicep? Think about, think about it. I'm focusing here on my lower back, right? Because that's what the, that's what the MRI tells me. Your, your MRI says this is the problem. So the textbook doctor, ph textbook physiotherapist says, oh, problem A, do that. Without even freaking looking at you, without even, without even testing anything, without giving you a chance to figure it out. He says, think of every part of your body, your biceps, your triceps, your forearms, your deltoids, your pecs, your upper back, maybe even a bit of lower back, your abs. Oh, whoa, 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 don't do crunches. Any kind of crunching exercises can only make the herniation worse. Yeah, but what if it doesn't? I did fo I did forward bends. I did I did forward bends for thirty years, and that fixed my herniation. The only time I stopped was when I found out it was a hernia, and all of the doctors, all of the physiotherapists, says, no, 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 don't do that. Now, does that mean I've started doing forward bends? No, because I tested that forward bend and it did hurt, so I didn't do it. Okay, but my calves, my upper legs, my hamstrings. They're okay. They're all okay. Can I twist to the left? Yeah, that feels good. Can I twist to the right? Oh, okay, the right was a little bit tricky for me. Okay. See? So I'm relearning that every single part of my body that works fine, you should be using those parts of your body. And if there's a part of your body, if there's a movement that doesn't work, avoid it. I got my hope back. Thank you, Dr. Charlie Johnson. I'm overcoming my fear. Thank you, Dr. Charlie Johnson. And my pain went from nine months or the greater part of nine months at a nine on 10 unbearable, I need a wheelchair pain to almost none. I'm still being careful. I'm still being vigilant. I'm not telling everybody to go out and do whatever. No, listen to professionals. But the only professionals you should be paying close attention to, in my humble opinion, are the ones that look away from the computer screen and look at you and say, I hear you and I see you. Not you, the symptom, not you, the MRI, not you, the diagnosis. No, you, the person, because every single person navigates the challenges of life. Two people can have exactly the same diagnosis, but go about navigating and healing and succeeding through those challenges in completely different ways. He's basically doing the opposite of what you'd think would get in business. He's giving you the tools to do it your effing self, is he not? Because every other physiotherapist was saying, yeah, do it anyways. And he brought me to a point of healing by just teaching me how to listen to myself. Where does that, where do you come into all of this? Well, this has been my philosophy for life that I've been preaching, that I've preached in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of art talks when it came to navigating the emotional challenges of an art career, when it came to navigating a difficult art career in general, when it came to, you know, managing your personal life and your financial life and your professional life, how to navigate all of these things together. A lesson that has been recurring in every point in my life when I hit a breaking point. My career, my relationships, my family, my YouTube channel, my, my business, and now my body. Every single time I learned the lesson that I got tattooed on my arm because I need a constant reminder, know thyself. That's what this means. And it's what I keep preaching ad nauseum 
okay, is always the key to my salvation after I've paid my dues, after I've had my heart shattered, after I've spent my 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 12th year being completely piss broke because I keep getting sacked from a job, after I, I suffer crippling imposter syndrome by being the black sheep of every single studio I've ever been in, to being that YouTuber who's trying to be a YouTuber instead of trying to be himself on his channel. And this, what, this video I'm sharing with you right now, ironically, is a manifestation. It is, it is a demonstration of, of that. The fact that this video is, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes long, when the algorithm, when the YouTube algorithm and all those YouTube channels say, try to keep it at 12 to 15 minutes, they move the goalpost every two seconds. No, my channel is not about 12 minute videos. It's about me sitting down and talking your head off for as long as, until my thought is finished, right? It's about knowledge of self. And that you, Mike, that you who, who share in this time and space with me, appreciate it. And those who want a video to be over in five minutes, they're gone. they've been gone a long time ago, aren't they? And I don't give a shit. Because I know what feels right to me as a professional, as a father, as a lover, as a YouTuber, and as a human being who inhabits this body. You're going to hit breaking points in your life. You're going to suffer. That's a promise. And I want you to know that when you've lost all hope, when you're standing on that precipice, when the people that you've reached out to, your only hope to get through this, psychologists, psychiatrists, doctors, therapists, surgeons, anybody, when they fail you, and that was your last straw. And now you're left completely on your own. And you're completely hopeless. And you're completely desperate. That's usually when you finally figure out the value of this lesson. And that's when real healing happens. When life has completely strangled you to the point of flatlining. You ain't dead yet. You're just beginning. And I've learned this lesson time and time again throughout my life. I spent the last eight, nine months of my life being hopeless and fearful and exhausted and scared and desperate. And I wouldn't have discovered Dr. Charlie Johnson to teach me this incredibly incredibly important lesson to give me this most important reminder and it's because of that that I hold people like him in such high regard that I'll dedicate an entire fucking YouTube video to celebrating his genius, celebrating his courage to not be like the rest of the pack, to actually listen to people, to actually be there, to to say no, 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 no. I don't, uh, you don't need to pay me weekly sum so I can slowly walk you through a process. No, you can do this. You're perfectly good at doing this yourself. Here are the tools. I, I commend his courage. And it's for that reason that I want to use my channel and my voice to help to amplify the great service he's done. Because trust me, you might watch his video and say, okay, cool. He's a good physiotherapist. But for somebody who's been in my position, who hasn't been able to move, who hasn't been able to sleep, who hasn't been able to think straight, who hasn't been able to function, who hasn't been able to walk, who hasn't been able to do anything for the last nine months, he's an absolute godsend. He's a savior uh, in, a, in a sea full of, of textbook, you know, diamond dozen physiotherapists. There are some good ones out there. But you got to filter through them, and I'm giving you a sh I'm giving you a shortcut straight to the straight to the best of the best today. So, with that said, thank you for enduring this long and uh, long and exhausting story. And today's video is not uh, a, a story of whining and complaining and suffering. I'm not being, as they'd say in Polish, a histerichka. 
an old whiny old coot. No, it's a story of happiness and hope and empowerment and self-discovery and the joy of life and the joy of life that can only come from sometimes having life hand your ass back to you a few times. And to Dr. Charlie Johnson, again, I want to thank you eternally for your courage and your wisdom and for helping me to get through a very difficult point in my life. And to everybody else, take care of yourselves. Now I'm going to do the walk across to the camera, even though I have a, I have a remote right here. I can turn off the camera from a distance, but I'm not. I'm going to walk across just to prove that I'm in good shape. Look at that piece of cake. <laughs> oh, shit. Just kidding.